I've probably seen this movie a hundred times and I'm still hyped to start it. Just hearing the crickets in the Universal logo get my blood pumping. Yes, the crickets are a win. Also, the credits are stylized like the red and yellow Jurassic Park logo and even have a prehistoric typeface. And speaking of the logo, the branding is extensive. Hard hats, patches, it's exactly what Hammond would do. You might say they spared no expense. And the first of many fake outs in this series. What's that huge thing coming through the trees? Oh, it's just human machinery. Humans, the real monsters. I guess he had to be there, but as a kid, I was never sure what genre of movie these were based on the trailers. All I knew is that it was dinos. My favorite thing in the world, just slightly beating out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but watching the trailer now, it's definitely sold as adventure with a touch of the scaries. And then when I got to see it as an eight-year-old at the drive-in, this scene cements what it actually is, a straight-up horror monster movie. Shoot also proof that Muldoon was always willing to put humans above the raptors, even if it was too late this time. And I don't believe this one dies, but where was Owen with a hand up when you need him? Say, wahoo? I don't, I'm not sure what this note means. It's a me, I don't, what, what is, I guess we'll never know. I've already got Ian Malcolm, but they think he's too trendy. And that never, ever changes. Because grunts like me, he's a digger. Yes, they are entirely different worlds, but I love the idea that Escobedo thought dinosaurs are way too dangerous, so he started a Colombian drug cartel. Clear and present danger, you're with me. That doesn't look very scary. I was around this kid's age when I saw this movie, and even I was like, kid, reel it in. Clearly he has not seen Possession, or Event Horizon, since it hadn't come out yet. Try to imagine yourself in the Cretaceous period. So it's not the movie or Spielberg who got the name of the park wrong. Grant clearly knows about the Cretaceous period, so the error or deliberate simplification was Hammond's, which totally makes sense. Triassic Jurassic Cretaceous Park doesn't have the same ring to it, or actually more like mostly Cretaceous Park, and Jurassic is like an onomatopoeia for danger, Jurassic. And that's when the attack comes, not from the front, but from the side. Muldoon getting cooked, shadowing. This movie is just the tightest, cleanest script ever written. And he slashes at you with this six inch retractable claw, like a razor, he slashes at you here. Even more fun is now we know exactly what happened to the guard a few minutes ago. Yay! Horrifying! You are alive when they start to eat you. Knowing how to deal with kids. To be fair, he hadn't yet met Ricky Baker. I mean, what's so wrong with kids? They're noisy, they're messy, they're expensive. They pester you about your book, choke you while repelling, puke, that kind of stuff. Baby <laughs> smell. Accurate. I mean, he is not wrong, but it's like heaven. I own an island. An island? <sighs> Really sounds like he spared no, no expense. expense. What? Fine, you get this one, Hammond. A minute 16 long take with just dialogue. Just cuz. Our attractions will drive kids out of their minds. And what are those? Small versions of adults, honey. <laughs> they aren't, but some people treat them that way. Hey, it's one of the kids from the Goonies. Wait, no. Huh. That's weird. Must have stolen his shirt. You shouldn't use my name. Dodson! Dodson! We've got Dodson here! Clearly someone cared because he had a complete and total facial reconstruction surgery before opening his sanctuary and locusting the world's food. Weird, I really thought I was gonna like this guy, but shaving cream on someone's pie? Nope, not for me, mister. <laughs> he's immediately a weirdo, and I've never heard from anyone that he's a creep, so obviously I'd never say that. And I shan't be looking into it. Seems like a perfect gentleman. Again, I'm, I'm not totally convinced I've seen this movie. I guess watching with Jude is a different experience, but the little knee squeeze? Especially for a mathematician. Chaotician, chaotician, actually. I bring scientists, you bring a rock star. Didn't understand what a chaotician was as a kid, so this line made me think Malcolm was an actual rock star, which uh, actually, yeah, that, that checks out. Finding out how many women, including my sister-in-law, thought he was just the bee's knees was a formative moment for me as a youth. Obviously, I get it now. Dr. Sattler, I, I refuse to believe that you aren't familiar with the concept of attraction. What can you even say about this theme? John Williams stands alone. Yahoo! O-M-G. I think we just national treasured Yahoo! What a weird little moment where Grant uses two female ends of seatbelts to make them function in an unconventional way. Can't imagine that has any payoff. Looks to me like they've already had some trouble with flying reptiles. I have never ridden in a helicopter, but just because everyone does it, I'm gonna stand up straight like a boss to prove that the six feet of clearance you have from the blades is plenty. In 48 hours, I'll be accepting your apologies. Technically, you're gonna have to make multiple stops to talk to his legs and then his upper body. You're just never gonna beat Spielberg for a shot like this. What do you even call it? A character sees something reveal? The dolly zoom on Brody, now Grant in absolute awe about what he's seeing. He even repeats the same camera move for Sattler. It's, it's a dinosaur. And what a perfect choice for the first one on screen. It's bigger than anything we have on land, which would be terrifying in its own right, but also docile and herbivorous. What? 
What a fake reach. You didn't gain any ground, stupid animal. This movie sucks. I love that Ian is already beside himself about how stupid this whole thing is. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. We have a T-Rex. Oh. Appropriate reaction. Way more appropriate than you even realize yet, Alan. They do move in herds. And that's gotta be some crazy wish fulfillment. Seeing your theory proven before your eyes? Amazing how many times we'll see this banner again and never up like that. Are these characters uh, auto erotica? That's mostly gonna be up to you, Gennaro. Henry Wu, how could we have known that he'd be the most prolific Jurassic character even being a villain for an entire season of Camp Cretaceous? Also, I think I've said this exact thing before, but it's even more important now because two years before Jurassic Park, he played the role I will always know him as, bad guy in mystery date. Still scary, even the babies. The Jurassic World movies really figured out some kind of magic because they somehow made raptor babies cute. Now how do you know they're all female? Does somebody go out in the park and pull up the dinosaur skirts? Get it? He's kind of a creep. Like a rock star. Sorry, rock stars. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously. But, oh, there it is. There it is. Hammond, you have no idea what he's talking about, so you just nodded and repeated his line back to him. A true businessman. I'm simply saying that life, uh, finds a way. If only they'd given us a visual example of this platitude. You bred raptors. Man, just the visual storytelling is amazing. Grant finds out they have raptors, has a look of terror, and the next scene is them all trying to catch up to him outside the raptor paddock. <laughs> oh, the captions say mooing in fear. I bet. They should all be destroyed. Comes off like a joke, but I don't think Muldoon's joking even a little bit. And they're astonishing jumpers. Sure, 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 sure. But what would they do against a tween gymnast? Even problem-solving intelligence, especially the big one. And she looks at you, you can see she's working things out. It seems there's still a debate about whether this is the big one or if this one died. I lean towards her being the big one because of this eye contact insert. They do shoot her at the end, but who knows if the shots were just enough to scare her into the cage. Not like aiming through slats would have been super easy. They were testing the fences for weaknesses systematically. They remember. I'm an animal lover, but this. This should be all Hammond needed to hear to start euthanizing. Raptors are a no. Four TV screens in the dining room. John really spared no expense. Okay, this is getting weird. We'll have a, a coupon day. It's interesting that the money-obsessed guy gets well, eaten. We'll a, There's a lesson in there. Gee, the lack of humility before nature that's being displayed here um, staggers me. As a kid, I thought Malcolm was a weirdo and a buzzkill, but everything he says in this diatribe is spot on. Uh, it didn't require any discipline to attain it. And now you're selling it. You're selling it. His objections really have nothing to do with what's about to happen. He's correct, of course. His indictment of capitalism, his fear of genetic engineering being used to make money, but his issues go beyond T-Rexes ruining his shirts. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And he gets all the best lines. Not just quotable, but like, that's such a true statement when it comes to... Well, you, you know. I simply don't understand this Luddite attitude, especially from a scientist. Fun fact, did you know that Luddites get a bad rap and that their issue isn't with technology progressing, but with the technology being owned by a handful of people rather than benefiting the workers or, you know, all of society? That's a Cinema Wins History Lesson of the Week. Scars would have explored what you call discovery. I call the rape of the natural world. We won't get to the Lost World this year, but Ian's continuity holds over the course of this series. He gives Sarah a very similar speech about how impartial observation is impossible because by observing, we impact. And the only one I've got on my side is the blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> Thank you. 90s movies really hated lawyers, just ask Fletcher Reed. In hindsight, it seems pretty insane to bring kids to an experimental park with murder monsters, but they are the target audience, so, you know. Electric cars. Hammond, you are starting to remind me of another guy who spared no expense. expense. This is getting rude now. Hold on to your butts. Hey, Lego movie reference. Crazy. Hey, look at me. I get the feeling Spielberg just told Joseph Mazzella and Ariana Richards to just be yourselves because this would be the peak of 10-year-old comedy. What do they got in there, King Kong? Nah, just his main enemy back in the day. We now know Dilophosaurus is actually poisonous. Yeah, first it would be venomous, and no, we don't. But I wouldn't trade historical accuracy for Newman comeuppance any day of the week. Allowing the carnivore to eat at its leisure. Also, that's come up in shadowing that is more vengeful than you're actually led to believe when it actually happens. Go ahead, all, right. all of you. I'm approaching the Tyrannosaur paddock. I love how serious he is. He hates everything about all of this. Dinosaurs eat man. Woman inherits the earth. <laughs> well played, Ellie. He's gonna eat the goat? Excellent. Immaculate sibling energy. T-Rex doesn't wanna be fat, he wants to hunt. Yet I would say, if only he had some good challenging prey. The shorthand is the, the butterfly effect. 
I doubt this was the first time the butterfly effect was mentioned in a movie, but it's definitely the reason I know it exists. But my favorite part is that Sattler doesn't just nod along like Hammond did earlier like she knows what's going on. Smart people know that they don't know everything and are happy to admit it. Usually the smarter they are, the more they know that they know very little. You know, a smart guy who builds planes isn't gonna go like buy MySpace or something and try to run it. That would just be so stupid. Chaos flirting. Here I'm now by myself, uh, uh, talking to myself. That's, that's chaos theory. Still needs to finish his point. I, I can relate. And his book was a lot fatter than yours. It was like, really? like this. Yours was fully illustrated, honey. I love how much she's enjoying this and just going in on him. I know there really wasn't time for a satisfying conclusion to their flirtation. Maybe they'll do another movie in, say, 30-ish years? Oh, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen. This is the moment that really sold me and probably lots of people forever. The Triceratops is really there and everything about this scene feels real. It's not a showy scene, she's sick, which makes it feel like we're getting a behind the scenes look and appropriate reaction. This is such a wonderful moment. I feel like on paper it'd be hard to explain the impact, but seeing it really is incredible. And you can already hear the storm rolling in. Hey, it's that other kid from the Goonies? No, still not him. You're married? Occasionally. I have been happily married for 13 years now, but I can't believe I've never used that response before. I'm going to now. Hey, it's one more kid from the Goonies. I'm pretty sure that really is him. It's just another example of great writing. He's speeding because the ship is threatened to leave without him. His glasses are fogged up because he went out in the rain. He's not just doing dumb things to lead to the next scene. Uh -huh. you didn't say the magic word. Please! Uh -huh. Excellent job at making this immediately annoying. Where did the vehicle stop? Hoo <laughs> boy, what a fun cut. Even someone looking at their giant 90s cellular telephone would remember the goat. Kids okay? I didn't ask, why wouldn't they be? I wants to be scared about this little hiccup in the power. Yeah, I didn't say I was scared. I didn't say you were scared. I know. These two, this banter. It's just a perfect shot. It's the definition of iconic. Pure terror of the known unknown. And there she is, making the goat look like a chicken nugget. He also left the door open just in case anyone was worried they'd feel bad about him getting eaten. We just did Avatar, which is amazing for 2009, but now we're in 1993, folks. The T-Rex is still blowing minds three decades later. <laughs> that little smirk. He's still a little excited about the T-Rex. You said you've got a T-Rex? Uh-huh. Say it again. It really never got any better than Rexy's growl, did it? Look at that pupil constriction when she shines the light in Rexy's eyes. And there was nothing like hearing this in theaters. It really rumbles your bumbles. There are a few iconic scary moments in this movie, and this one was like cinema changing. There's just no way you won't feel stressed out watching this. <laughs> that oh no, what am I doing moment. Ian, freeze! You have to give Ian credit for trying to help, but also dude has no clue what he's doing. Grant is standing still, only moves the flare, makes sure Rexy's attention is on the flare, and then throws the flare while staying still. Ian just... Runs. Get the kid! Get but Ian is clearly a dad. When Grant checks on the other car, he asks how the kids are, and then this is a clear self-sacrifice. But also, let's not sleep on Grant, who was the first to make the decision to risk his life to save the kids. Badass good guy if there ever was one. Malcolm just riding that snoot like a cowboy. This moment goes by so fast that it can be a little hard to understand what happened to Malcolm in a willow swinging to safety under the bridge to avoid the Ebersisk sort of way. Should've shut the kid's door. Shouldn't have been a lawyer in the 90s. What a horror scream. I know I can't keep saying iconic, but what a dang shot. Let's just say that. Oh boy, the flat ground that became a cliff. If you've never noticed this before, good, that's exactly how it was supposed to be. There are a few theories, but first, here's the continuity error. The T-Rex steps out on level ground between the two SUVs. Later in the same spot, Alan and the kids are spun around by the SUV. If the SUV has moved 10 feet, I would be surprised, but here they are standing on a 50-foot wall. My favorite theory is that there's a moat and Rexy stepped over it, or that it's flat where she exited, but a few feet in this direction, it's a cliff. But the mere fact that they use the cables to repel the cables that the T-Rex knocked down is enough to know that this is a choice that made the movie more fun. Like, the T-Rex can't chase them because the place she just came from is no longer accessible. There's no explanation. And honestly, that Spielberg 100% without question knew it was a continuity error but chose fun over continuity and no one noticed for decades says all I need to know. <laughs> Gotta get some laughs in even when it's all falling apart. Yeah, Tim's dead. I'm glad he isn't, but yet yeah, dead. Okay, that was either the goofiest pratfall sound inserted ever, his shoe squeaked really loudly, or he surprised the Dilophosaurus with the fall. Going with one of the latter. Honestly, for the doofus they make Nedry out to be, I'm kinda impressed he knows how to use a winch. Respect. 
Well, Nope, never mind. Back to Doofus. Don't say hello. Run. But you have to have some dino deaths in your dino death movie, and if you don't create characters like this, you end up torturing innocent babysitters. Thought you were one of your big brothers. You're not so bad. Fun fact, the real Dilophosaurus was closer to the size of a T-Rex, but that would have made this encounter not nearly as fun. Also, fun story, I guess? The one thing I remember about the Jurassic Park book, what, you didn't know it was based on a book? Is the description of Nedry's death, because it's way worse than what happens in the movie. I mean, like, way worse stuck with me. I just fell down a hill. I'm soaking wet. I don't have any food. I love the phrasing so much. You have food on you, in you. You're made of food, friend. Seriously, don't read the book. It'll mess you up. It's actually impressive that someone found this thing. He loves it! But that's not what I'm gonna do. And he thinks he'd be bad with kids. That's pretty much all kids want to know. You won't abandon them. You okay? Let's do a lot. Great moment of honesty. It's just like coming out of a treehouse. Did your dad ever build your treehouse? No. Damn it, Tom. Commiseration. Never, never look down. This never. is impossible. Again, the joke is that he's bad with kids, but oh man, is this just parenting? Say one thing, do another, be scared out of your mind, and try to hide it while your kid trusts that you won't let them die, all the while you're not even sure you'll survive. <laughs> And it's at this moment that you realize there hasn't been a piece of music for the last 17 minutes. No joke. The entire T-Rex attack was silent, but for the rain, bending metal, and T-Rex terror. We're back in the car again. <laughs> the comedy in this script doesn't get nearly enough credit for being as solid as it is. I think this was Gennaro. I think this was too. Look, the rules were simple. Don't be a lawyer in a 90s movie unless your name was Vinny. I don't understand why this was so hard to understand. Remind me to thank John for a lovely weekend. Thinking ahead politeness. Give me a chance moving him. Please, chance it. <laughs> Even Rexy has perfect comedic timing. I'm fairly alarmed here. <laughs> Honesty. How did he not win Best Supporting Actor for this? Must go faster. Appropriate thing to say when fleeing a T Rex or aliens. <laughs> Again, a solid horror scream. I forget she hasn't seen the T Rex, and actually, Malcolm probably hasn't even had time to tell her what happened, so this is all surprising. I think I'll have that on the tour. They used to, I think. I never made it before they changed it to world. I hate trees. They don't bother me. Oh, yeah, well, you weren't in the last one. <laughs> Siblings, you can't live with them and you can't throw them out of trees. Shh, don't the monsters come over here? They're not monsters next, they're just animals. Yeah, tell that to this gremlin. I don't know, what do you call a blind dinosaur? Do you think he saw us? <laughs> no notes. What do you call a blind dinosaur's dog? Or do you think he saw us, Rex? Still, no notes. Ha! And you haven't even met the raptors yet. And now I understand why I always wanted the Jurassic Park merch as a kid. The design of the interior of the park is pretty great, too, with the fossil and the pillar. People would say they could see the fleas. Oh, I could see the fleas. Mommy, can't you see the fleas? What? Flea circuses don't have fleas? Having Nedry was a mistake. He's not wrong. Everything that went wrong was absolutely Nedry's fault, and I'm not even about to blame Hammond for underpaying him since it was Nedry's lowball bid to get the job. But also tangentially related, pay your workers more if you want to avoid this situation. Also, don't take the lowest bid. Next time, it'll be flawless. But saying this crap when your grandkids still aren't back and could be dead? Yeah, screw you, guy. And he says he doesn't like kids. Amazing what a life-threatening situation can do to you. God bless you! What a polite little gentleman. The dinosaurs are breeding. Okay, so all jokes aside, this was set up with the two female ends of the seatbelts, then Ian saying life finds a way in response to Wu's question. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? And it's just further proof that this movie is the best. Jeff Goldblum's workout routine. Again, no clue even as a teenager that this man was a sex symbol. And again, obviously I get it now. Hold on to your butts. He says it twice? I didn't know it was his catchphrase. I thought it was just something that slipped out once. Look at the wheeling, the uniform direction changes, just like a flock of birds evading a predator. You'd think that would have been a tip off, Alan. Look, it's blood. Blood and boogers, they are the way to children's hearts. It ought to be me really going. We can discuss sexism and survival situations when I get back. It's a quick line, but I love when old dudes try old school chivalry. Like, my guy, she could wreck you, blindfolded. While being hunted. He's just the coolest, the hat, the socks. He's killing it and nothing will kill him. Hey, Ian's daughter takes that move to the next level in the next movie. This is one of those movies that doesn't spend a lot of time reminding us we're on Crazy Island, but occasionally we get glimpses. <laughs> You know, I want to chalk this up to Grant still not understanding kids, but to be fair, he's playing perfectly to 50% of his audience. That's not funny. <laughs> that was great. Actually, it's pranks, blood, and boogers that are the way to children's hearts. <laughs> it's insane that in a movie where different sized dinosaurs chase people around, the turning on the power set piece is one of the most tense. I said one of. Is there a name for something when it's horrifying and, and deeply concerning, but also hilarious because that's what this is? Ha, I never noticed the light bulb smoking on our head. Another appropriate reaction. People just really know how to feel in this movie. I mean, 
One of the best shots in cinema right here. And the best part about it is that Grant set the entire thing up in the beginning of the movie while trying to ruin this poor child's life. Clever girl. Fun fact, Ruben, the guy who writes with me for this channel, likes to put clever girl into as many scripts as he possibly can, knowing that I'll never use it, and he's finally getting his wish. I guess that makes him a clever girl. Oh, come on. Either way, a badass one-liner to die on. I mean, you're about to be torn to shreds and you just can't help but be impressed? Huh, because they're reptiles? That's what the snake is about? Oh my god, the other raptor. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> Tim's alive. I love that there isn't a moment of hesitation. Yeah, I'd say you've earned as many desserts as you'd like. Run. And a classic line was born. Weird to consider, but someone says it in every movie. This should have been the Jello commercial. Could have avoided a whole bunch of nonsense. You sure the third one's contained? Yes, unless they figured out how to open doors. Hey yo, what a jinx. We already know they're smart, but the raptors calling out to each other was still a terrifying surprise. Purposeful communication? Screw you, you giant turkey! The terror that is this entire scene. You can't even put it into words. While the T-Rex scene had no score, this one has a creepy one, but part of me almost wonders if it was a choice to lessen the tension because the raptors hunting the kids in the kitchen is the scariest scene in any Jurassic movie. I'd put it up against anything. Indo raptor in the bedroom, child's play. T-Rex in the camp, okay, that, that one is a little scary, but nothing compares to this moment. It's well known now that the Velociraptors in this movie were based more on something like a Utah Raptor or Deinonychus and that Velociraptors were a lot smaller, but it was the right choice. Their size here makes them just an unbeatable foe. Plus, Spielberg was right, Deinonychus is too hard to say, although Jude has been nailing Pachycephalosaurus and Parasaurolophus since he was four? Still not as much fun to say. Raptor. Jurassic. Aw, well that's some quick thinking from an excellent older sibling. It's just one of the best fake outs of all time. It took me a dozen times through to start remembering that she was in a reflection. These shots through the legs? Oh, nope, absolutely not. Freaking Oppenheimer. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was that bad, but pr pretty bad. It's a human sister. We know, Tim made fun of you for it earlier. I can't get it with my mom. Dang, too bad both Tim's legs fell off in the last scene and therefore he couldn't possibly get the gun for Grant. More support is important, guys. But actually, when you stop to think about it, the gun was pretty much useless. One of the adults was going to have to stop holding the door even if he handed it to them, and also, he's a kid! And there was barely enough time for them to even yell out to him. Gonna come through the glass! What a device to ratchet up the stress. Hearing the gunshots through the phone and then the slow push in on the jammed cartridge? Yeah, I don't blame you at this point. Raptors honoring the three points of contact rule up the stepladder is not the question. <laughs> So good. Many have tried to capture moments like this, but no one does it better. Seriously though, there isn't a break to breathe in these last 20 minutes. The kids barely get a bite of problematic gelatin before they need to start running and it just never lets up. I like that everyone is just sort of doing their own thing at this point. But I bet Tim and Lex never thought they'd get to touch the displays. No one ever lets you touch the displays. I just want to touch the displays. That's the second time Tim has been saved by being small and in the right place at the right time. Again, if only they knew the hand up signal, it works every time. Rexy to the rescue. And this has always been a non-error to me. The raptors are stalking them, shrieking at them. You wouldn't notice a monster truck crashing in through the wall. Plus, there's no cups of water around to see shaking. Also kind of love that Rexy gets the main theme. I guess she is on the logo. After careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. So have I. Haha, <laughs> got him. You guessed it, iconic shot that's iconic without the secondary meaning since this would technically lead to dinosaurs actually ruling the world again. Or at least messing up people's weddings and stuff. Not gonna lie, the closing shot of the characters being the kids cuddling up with Grant is pretty sweet. They wouldn't leave his side until they were an arm's length from their parents, I can guarantee that. This isn't the first dinosaur movie I've done, but it is one of the only big mainstream dino movies, so let me take this opportunity to say if you have a dino movie in your head, make it! As the father of a kid who loves dinosaurs, and as I'm sure any parents with similar kids will agree, there are not enough dino movies. And it's only a matter of time before your five-year-old is just done rewatching The Land Before Time and sequels for the hundredth time, and he notices the very realistic-looking dinosaur on the thumbnail for a Jurassic movie. And look, I might get some judgment for this, but Jude loves the Jurassic movies? We fast forwarded for a long time. Jurassic World was the first one he saw because he was obsessed with the Indominus before even seeing the movie. But the point of this little anecdote is that after having watched this movie at least, and I mean at least once a month for the last few years, is that there aren't enough dino movies. Dinosaur is fine, walking with dinosaurs is excellent even, but once you start getting into the Korean redubs like Dino King, where everyone dies, you start to really question what Hollywood's problem is. Doesn't every kid love dinosaurs? Well, you've got to about three and a half before Dinosaur Train just doesn't have the claws they desire, and if you're lucky, Gigantosaurus will be an acceptable rerun until they start thirsting for the teeth. 
With that rant out of the way, hey, I get it. Who wants to make a movie about dinosaurs when the perfect one already exists? I enjoy all the sequels for different reasons. I think JP3 gets a worse rap than it deserves, but the truth is that none of them will ever truly compare to this movie. And like I pointed out, it's got some problems, some gaps in logic, but that's just a testament to its power. Look at Lex's face get pasted over this obvious stunt double, but it's a timeless story. Literally. It's also got some weird modern day parallels with dudes thinking having enough money will solve every problem imaginable no no expense. when actually one dweeb can shut you down with a keystroke. Look, there's not much else to say about it. I mean, I could probably talk for hours, but you've heard it before. The most significant legacy this movie has is that 30 years later, the actors who nailed each of their respective parts wanted to come back, and each fell right back in. And I know it's a little weird that I'm skipping past the Lost World in Jurassic Park 3 now with flying reptiles, but I thought it would be fun to do the OG and Dominion back to back. So yeah, uh, here's the teaser frame. We'll have more to talk about next week when my voice doesn't sound like this. See you then.